Yo, what's up guys? So, I know you wanted to see a tutorial on the Sam Colder transitions. Now, I'm going to do them on Final Cut Pro. I know Baker's Tut, he's already put one out. He's on Premiere, After Effects. Now, I, I can still do the same transitions in After Effects, but I figured out a way to do it in Final Cut Pro. And it's not as clean, I guess. You have to like mess with it just a little bit, but it works. So, now we're doing the, the zoom transition. It's the easiest one. You don't have to use a kaleidoscope on this one. It just zooms out and then it zooms back. It's the same thing like what his does. But his is a video minus pictures. So, I'll show you this real quick. Basically, what you want to do is it's keyframing from the beginning to the last three frames of the shot. And you're going to have a slow zoom out. So, you're just slowly zooming. And then from the last three frames, it's a punch zoom. It's like or a, like a reverse zoom effect, whether it's zooming in or zooming out, but you, you're punching and chopping through so many, uh, or like the scale size is a lot bigger um, in distortion. So, you're going to like transform out and look like how smooth it is from here. And then you go from here one, two, and then you're already at the end of the frame. And then it jumps. Same thing when you're coming into the next shot. You're going one, two, and then on the third stroke, then it's going to go smooth after. So the first three frames and the last three frames of the clip, whatever you're transforming, those are where your edit's really going to lie. What you do after you have those first three, which I like to work with first, then in the beginning, set your keyframe out further. So like basically over here, the keyframe, the scale is set at 135. If I go back down to 100, it's just going to be there. So you want to have it at 135. Since I'm starting in close, exactly what he did here, started in close and he's zoomed out. So you start in close, back, 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 all the ways until you get to your first marker, and then you punch out the harsh zoom in those last three, and then you're already in the next one. Okay, and like there's key, so there's three keyframes. There's one up here in the beginning, there's one right at the marker, and that's how you have your slow transition, and then there's a the last keyframe at the end of the clip where it goes from 126 in the scale size to like 100 or something like that. Um, 105, so it's just, it's punched harsh. Same thing with this one, um, since you're starting in close and you're zooming out, same thing, so you go from 144, I think it's at, wherever it's on the scale thing. Yeah, where one, uh, 144, hit a keyframe, one, two, three, hit another keyframe, zoom it in to where it's at, so it's at 107. Now all the ways across this, you're gonna have another keyframe wherever you wanna do your next edit like he does his. I put 100 there, so scale size, basically it's gonna curve down. It's basically going from here, and it's like slow, 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 watch my arrow key, and then jumps, and then here again, like jumps, and then slow, 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 and then jumps again. So, that's it's easy, it's like, here, I'll, I'll show you across the board what my edit looks like with his, and vice versa, the same thing. So I'll chop his, and then I will show you mine and see if it blends into his well, which it should, because mine's a still frame in his video. I, it's pretty close. I mean, let's watch it with his full. It looks better with the video because you can like distort it a little bit and have it shaking and flashy lights, but it's the exact same thing. Um, and then we'll go vice versa, show his thing here, and then show mine at the end. Let's check that one out. So his video to my still shot. It's pretty close what you're going to get. Okay, so what we're doing from here is we can start a little bit zoomed in, just, just a little slightly. So we'll keep from here, we'll punch it up to like I don't know, let's go to 111. And then the end of the clip, come in three. One, two, three, where our keyframe is. We'll make sure that's at like 100, so the scale's perfect, it fits. And then before we jump out on the, the last three frames, this is where things are gonna get a little weird. So on that last keyframe, we're at 100. One, two, three, this is our last keyframe, right? So let's edit this. Let's make this key, our keyframe's already there. And we will punch it low. Now here's the tricky part. If you use anamorphic crop bars, if you don't use it, I honestly don't know how to like do this edit for you unless you want to mirror up here too, but that looks like shit. Um, anamorphic crop bars will get rid of this stuff for you. So what, we're, what we want to get rid of right now, the fact that we're zooming out so harshly in like two frames, three frames, we want to get rid of this side shit over here. Okay. So when you do that, 
and like you have your keyframe stuff set up, if you try to edit like this and the what the effect's called is, uh, I think it's Kaleidoscope or something like that over here on the transitions thing or the effects browser. Yeah, I think it's Kaleidoscope. Okay, I don't know what it's at. Just go to distortion or looks or some shit, right? No, no, stylize, sorry. It's in stylize, uh, no it's not. It's in looks. Jesus Christ, where is it? Tiling, that's what it is, Kaleido Tile. Okay, so if you were gonna use Kaleido Tile on this, it's basically gonna ruin your footage, I'll show you why. So you throw a cloud tile, this is what I want you to do, right? But like you can't use that. And if you, it's not gonna protect the black bars. So how you do it is you have to save your clip as a compound clip, which saves the entire frame. It'll save like the entire 1080 thing. And then it'll give you footage over here to mess with. So watch, I'll just save it as a new compound clip. It's a weird thing how Final Cut works, okay? And now we'll throw a cloud tile on it, okay? So you have to keyframe this stuff in too, but it's perfect, exactly what I wanted. Over here where the black bars were now, they're not there anymore. So we're gonna go back in, one, two, three. Wherever it's at, sorry. One, two, three. Where the other keyframe is, I think it's... God, why is it not showing up? Okay, I don't know why the key, oh, oh, that's what it is, okay. It's because it's, okay, here we go. Here's another thing I, I forgot to mention. Okay, when you keyframe things and then you compound clip it, the compound clip is saved. Like it's like you almost just like save that entire thing as its own separate clip. So your your edit's not going to show up unless you zoom in on it, which is you click the cross the or that little um, precision editor bar, and then you can see your keyframe stuff over here. So if you back out of it, just remember that we did it for the last three frames. So one, two, three. That's where it's at. But this collider tile thing is fucking me up, right? Well, set your keyframe marks and then we'll punch it until we don't see it anymore, okay? And this is where your edits are gonna start looking like magic. You don't see it, right? Great. So we will come over here, and we will see where we have the black bar, where it all starts, where it starts to get shitty. That's where it starts to get shitty, okay? So since you already set your keyframes right before it and the third thing, that's great. Now what you need to do is bring the width in until you see it right sync up with the trees. This is what Nano's leg look a little weird. And if you look at over here, um, when we're done, you'll see that, you don't need to mess with the height because your anamorphic crop bars will do that. But when you're done and you mess with the, um, with the footage, you'll be able to see how things are mirrored and stuff. So press and then just go from there, go to the next frame. So boom, okay, now we need to re-edit. So since you're keyframe once, it's just gonna fix it and do it again. So just make sure you sync it up. And then you can do the height if you want to. You're not even going to see it, though, because you use those bars. And there we go. And then the last one, don't even need it. So basically, it's just for those few. So we will go in like this, and we'll watch it now from when we tiled and did the keyframes on the zoom and tiles. So you have to compound clip with this, but we'll watch it from this. It's going to be quick. See so yeah, how it zoomed out? And if I had another clip to punch in... It would be it would work perfectly to where I could here. Let's try and steal a clip from his. So, um, let's see if that worked. Let's go back. Let's punch this here. Okay, since he's zoomed in right there, let's check it. So it should work to where it's the same kind of edit with his shoe and his leg, and it zooms out. Let's check it. Yeah, it looks great. Zoom out, slow pan, slow transition, and boom! Right into it. Now, what's, what we're missing here is, let's make this entire thing compound clip, right? Save it again. And uh, we'll go to the looks, and we'll throw on... Let's go to Cine look. Throw on the grain. Don't even worry about messing with this shit. No color treatment. Just give me the off the two, three, five, one to widescreen. This is why I was saying the crop bars work because you don't need the bottom of the top edit on the collider tile. So when we pan through it, oh, that looks fantastic. You don't even notice it. That's just a great edit. And that's how you do it. Keyframing, collider tile, and compound clips. If you need more um, of a tutorial and need more like focus on how to do this stuff, just hit me up, let me know, I will shoot you like step by step or something how to do it. So, but that's it. It's just keyframing, collider tiling, and there's your edit. There's three things you gotta keep in mind. One, 
what footage are you shooting? Two, the music. And three, if you know exactly what you're doing, you get good with it, you can shoot like that. The footage you're shooting, are you shooting things that work well with that edit? Does it look good? Can you zoom in and pan into that tree? Are you scoring it and, and syncing it up right to the drop of the beat? Don't just throw them in anywhere because this fad that's going on right now where people are using them a lot, it's gonna die like that if you just use them for anything. Let's say you're recording a vlog. If I was sitting there going like this, shooting in back and forth, that's, there's no, there's like, it's not fun. Everything they do is either on cue of a beat, right when it hits is when the middle of the transition starts. The footage you're shooting really, like I, I've used some of the transitions in my car films and stuff, but it doesn't always work. It only like, I guess some of the times it works is when I'm in the blocks video it would have worked better if I synced it up with music more um, and like had it a little bit more perfect and refined, but it was cool. It looks good, but it, it'll look a lot better if you can have it like to music and if you can have it like sync up smoothly into something that I can jump into. So like right now I'll punch in for my face and I'll punch back to that tree. So let me get the focus in here. So I'll just... <laughs>